Hello everyone, I'm Pu Wang from Data Lore. It's a great honor to present our work at the RISC-V Summit of this year. Our work is storage error network acceleration using RDMA, Rocky, and RISC-V. First, let me introduce myself and Data Lore. Uh, my name is Pu Wang. I used to work at Google for a couple of years. Uh, I, and then I <coughs> founded Data Lord two years ago. As for data load, we are building high performance distributed storage system. Uh, we think to achieve high performance, we need a software and hardware co design. Uh, because uh, only co design can simultaneously optimize uh, software and hardware. As for data load, the hard part implement uh, network acceleration, encoding, encryption, uh, compression, etc. The software part implements other functionalities. Uh, our software is written in Rust, and this is the GitHub link to our open source uh, project. If anyone is interested in, please give us some, give us some uh, feedback. And any contributions are welcome. So this is the <coughs> outline of my talk. I will talk about uh, four aspects. First, Rocky, Rocky V2. Uh, Rocky stands for RDMA over converted Ethernet. Next, the <coughs> Rocky V2 shortage, uh, basically uh, flow control, that's the most shortage of the uh, Rocky V2. Uh, thirdly, uh, the <coughs> I will introduce the existing algorithm for Rocky V2 flow control. And, the <coughs> and uh, uh, in the end, I will talk about uh, how we accelerate Rocky V2 flow control using RISC-V. First, RDMA. Uh, <coughs> what's RDMA? It's a high performance uh, network protocol. Uh, RDMA can achieve much better uh, network performance than uh, a TCP IP. Uh, why RDMA can achieve a <coughs> high performance? Because RDMA uh, bypass OS kernel. Because RDMA bypass OS kernel, so when RDMA transfer data between user application and uh, RDMA NIC, the RDMA hardware. When, when transferring data between <coughs> application and the uh, RDMA hardware, it uh, does not involve any kernel functionality. So <coughs> because the uh, kernel bypass RDMA, uh, when RDMA transferring data, it can avoid a lot of overhead. For example, it can avoid blocking I.O. It can avoid a context switch. It can avoid extra memory copy. So in summary, <coughs> RDMA uh, avoid blocking I/O, avoid a con context switch, avoid memory copy, extra memory copy. That's why RDMA can achieve high performance compared to TCP/IP. Because RDMA can achieve high performance, so <coughs> that's why we use it for our storage error network. Uh, concretely. We are using Rocky V2, uh, Rocky, that's the RDMA over converged Ethernet. We're using Rocky V2 as our storage error network. So what's our, our Rocky V2? Basically, it combine RDMA transport layer and uh, UDP. The RD, uh, Rocky V2 put the RDMA transport layer payload inside UDP. Because the UDP is a pretty simple protocol. So Rocky V2 is uh, much simpler than the original uh, RDMA. <coughs> and uh, Rocky V2 is widely used nowadays uh, because uh, Rocky V2 is on top of uh, UDP and uh, <coughs> UDP is on top of Ethernet. And then Rocky V2 can reuse almost all the existing uh, Ethernet equipment like a switch and router. So that's why Rocky V2 is widely used in nowadays data center. Uh, now we are building our own Rocky V2 network uh, interface card. Uh, why we don't uh, use commercial solution? Because uh, we have some customized needs. Uh, because we are building storage system. So like uh, encryption, coding, compression, those are typical storage uh, <coughs> requirement. And uh, those uh, storage requirements are missing in current uh, uh, commercial Rocky V2 car and uh, NIC. And more important, we want to overcome ROC 
uh, Rocky V2 shortage and to further improve its performance because we care about uh, performance a lot. What's the Rocky V2 shortage? <coughs> uh, uh, first, it's uh, Rocky V2 and uh, RDMA, they both have a huge uh, retry cost. Why? Because the RDMA protocol defined go back to end retry strategy. This strategy will retry package <coughs> from the lost package and all the package thereafter. Uh, for example, if RDMA de uh, detected the end package is lost, uh, even though RDMA receive uh, n plus one package, n plus two package, uh, when doing retry, it will retry from end package and all the package thereafter. So <coughs> that's why RDMA has a huge retry cost compared to TCP. TCP only do selective retry. TCP only retry the lost package. Uh, so that's why TCP has a, <coughs> a much lower retry cost. Because uh, ROC and uh, RDMA has a huge retry cost. So it requires lossless network. What's the lossless network? Basically, <coughs> this network never or almost uh, not drop packet. Basically, the uh, <coughs> RDMA uh, ROC require network to not drop packet so as to avoid the retry. But for, for Rocky V2, Rocky V2 is uh, on top of UDP and UDP on top of Ethernet. Ethernet itself is not lossless, right? <coughs> so that, that make a uh, uh, Rocky V2 uh, kind of uh, like a <coughs> complex to, to maintain a lossless uh, network on top of uh, Ethernet. And nowadays, most packet drop is due to congestion. So to make a network uh, lossless, basically make a Ethernet uh, lossless, Rocky V2 must apply a complex flow control algorithm to avoid congestion, so as to ensure losses. To avoid congestion in Ethernet, it's very complex. So that's the most shortage of Rocky V2. So how we overcome the Rocky V2 shortage, or equivalently how we use Rocky V2 to accelerate, uh, how, how we use RISC-5 to accelerate Rocky V2, uh, we propose a, a dynamic flow control in contrast to the static flow control used by current uh, Rocky V2. Static flow control might hurt performance because it might result in uh, deadlock. It cannot adapt to <coughs> network bandwidth change promptly. Uh, <coughs> as for dynamic uh, flow control, it leverages a probabilistic model to evaluate uh, uncertainty. Uh, like a uh, uh, like a deadlock detection, like uh, the uh, that adaptive parameter tuning, those are uncertainty event uh, in Rocky V2. So because we <coughs> uh, use dynamic flow control, it can improve the uh, Rocky V2 performance a lot. <coughs> uh, next, I'll introduce some existing flow control algorithm used uh, by uh, Rocky V2 nowadays. The first one is the PFC. PFC stands for priority based uh, flow control. So PFC, it uh, defines eight virtual channel inside a physical Ethernet link. Uh, for example, in this, <coughs> in this picture, the seventh virtual channel uh, of the sender send too much data to its downstream. Then the receiver <coughs> find out its uh, uh, buffer, uh, its a seventh channel buffer almost full. Then the downstream, uh, the seventh channel send a stop message to its upstream. This stop message is called a PFC frame. Once the sender, <coughs> the seventh virtual channel of the sender received the uh, PFC frame, it will stop sending any more. Uh, package. So this is the PFC. It's a uh, <coughs> pretty simple, simple. But the TMC has a lot of performance issue. For example, PFC can incur uh, deadlock in network. 
<coughs> why? Because if uh, there's there loop in the network, and then <coughs> and then uh, it might it might occur uh, deadlock. For example, if this uh, this node set <coughs> receive a lot of data from its upstream, then this node might send the PFC, and the <coughs> another node also receive a lot of package from its upstream. So this node will send the PFC frame also, and <coughs> again this node receive a lot of upstream, uh, a lot of package from its upstream, and later this this node send the PFC, and this node later also send the PFC to its upstream, because the the loop in the network, so the <coughs> all the node in the loop in the network will receive PFC, and all the node stop send send any more packet, then the whole network stops. Uh, that's pretty bad. Uh, the lucky thing is, uh, uh, in the nowadays, uh, data center use uh, Clausius network. Uh, that's a uh, network top a topology. Uh, Clausius network has no loop when it's stabilized. But uh, when it's not st stabilized, when, uh, for example, when the net network topology changed, add or remove a node, uh, something like that. The <coughs> the BGP algorithm, the, the routing al algorithm, uh, <coughs> uh, is not converged uh, because it need uh, B BGP takes some time uh, to calculate recalculate uh, <coughs> the the net uh, network topology. And before BGP is converged, uh, so it might it is, might still have some loop defined in the in the network. And if before the BGP is a uh, is a uh, <coughs> converged and uh, there are some PFC frame sent out then it might <coughs> uh, involve uh, it might occur deadlock so how to avoid that so we define a Bayesian model for deadlock detection uh, basically it's a probabilistic model to, to evaluate the uncertainty uh, of uh, <coughs> of deadlock it evaluate uh, this model evaluate how likely deadlock occur if multiple PFC uh, frame received in a fixed uh, period, and this is a uh, nick side deadlock detection, and because most switch nowadays support deadlock detection, so <coughs> with uh, both nick and switch can detect uh, deadlock, then the deadlock prevention can be <coughs> achieved in a more active way. The second flow control algorithm is ECN. Uh, it's uh, explicit. Congestion notification. Uh, basically, what it is in does is uh, <coughs> uh, a switch will detect congestion. When a switch detects congestion, a switch will uh, label a packet uh, <coughs> uh, with the uh, ECN bits. Uh, basically, ECN bits. There are two ECN bits. It's defined in the IP header of a packet. Uh, this is the IP uh, format of a packet, and ECN bits. Is defined uh, in these two <coughs> here, and if a switch detects a congestion, it will set the ECN bits, the both ECN bits, to one of a packet. And once the the packet is uh, received at the receiver side, receiver check the ECN bits. If both bits are are one, then receiver know oh, this packet uh, experienced a congestion along its path. That means uh, equivalent. That mean it's the path has congestion then receiver will send send a, a explicit congestion notification to the sender to the upstream uh, so that's why this algorithm called explicit congestion noti notification uh, that's because the receiver will send the ecn to the sender once the sender received the congestion notification it will <coughs> make some reaction accordingly so <coughs> what's the ecn setting so how to set the the two bits? So basically, the two ECN bits uh, can be set both to zero. That means the uh, ECN is not enabled. So when ECN is disabled, even though switch detected a congestion, it cannot set these two bits. Uh, if these two bit, uh, uh, either bit is one, like a one zero or zero one, uh, that means ECN is uh, uh, enabled. And if it's in the bits both set of one, that's, that that means switch detect a uh, congestion along <coughs> the way, along its path. 
So how a switch detects a congestion? Uh, that's defined by DCQCN, the third uh, flow control algorithm. Basically, DCQCN stands for data center quantized congestion notification. DCQCN uses a quantized way <coughs> to define uh, congestion. So uh, the DCQCN defines two thresholds, lower threshold, upper threshold, two threshold for each internal buffer in the uh, switch. So each internal buffer is used to save the pending packet along a path. If the number of pending packet in the internal buffer is larger than lower threshold, then the switch knows or some <coughs> uh, congestion uh, occurred. And the, the switch will will label will will <coughs> set the ESM bits of a of a, a, a packet according to some probability. The probability is defined uh, according to the number of pending packets in the uh, buffer. So <coughs> another case is uh, if the number of a pending buffer uh, is the, uh, the number of pending packet, uh, packet in the buffer is larger than the upper threshold. That means uh, the switch can no longer uh, process any more packet. And uh, uh, <coughs> if uh, larger than upper threshold, the switch start drop probability uh, drop uh, the packet. And the upper threshold is also the trigger point for the switch to trigger PFC. Uh, like uh, <coughs> uh, we mentioned before, PFC is the uh, we, uh, <coughs> uh, PFC. Uh, uh, if PFC is triggered, the, the downstream, like uh, the, this uh, switch, will send the PFC frame, the stop message, to its upstream. So, <coughs> so. Uh, <coughs> the upper upper threshold is the point where the switch start to drop uh, packet, and uh, also upper threshold is the trigger point of the PFC. So uh, DCQCN is try to uh, keep the number of uh, pending packet inside the internal buffer to lower to smaller than upper threshold. Uh, in this way, DCQCN can avoid data uh, packet drop, and the DCQCN can also avoid uh, uh, trigger PFC. <coughs> so that's how uh, a switch detects a congestion according to DCQCN uh, algorithm. <coughs> so next, how a sender uh, make a reaction to the congestion notification. <coughs> so that's also defined by DCQCN algorithm. So for example, if the sender uh, receive a uh, <coughs> receive a congestion message, so we call it a congestion notification packet, uh, CMP. Once a, a sender receive a CMP, it will drop its uh, uh, it will drop its sending rate immediately. So <coughs> in the meantime. Uh, sender will save the, the original rate, uh, sending rate to, to a variable called RT. And uh, how much amount of rate to drop? Uh, that's defined by a parameter called alpha. So basically, alpha defines how much rate to drop. And the alpha itself is controlled by a hyperparameter called G. Uh, G is a, a fixed uh, parameter. So alpha is a pretty important uh, Parameter in uh, DCQCN because uh, it defines how much <coughs> rate to drop, uh, and uh, uh, how much rate to drop later will uh, <coughs> influence uh, 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 the rate recovery stage. Will affect the rate recovery stage. So after sender drop uh, its rate, it will wait for a while. while. Uh, after that, it. Uh, <coughs> comes to a fast recovery stage. During fast recovery stage, the, 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 the rate will cover pretty fast. The rate co <coughs> cover step is defined by 
the RT, the original uh, rate and the current rate uh, divided by two. So we can see from the picture that the uh, fast recovery stage uh, recover rate pretty fast. Uh, usually after five steps, uh, the rate will <coughs> recover pretty much close to the original uh, rate. After fast uh, recovery uh, stage, <coughs> the center come to active probing stage. During active probing stage, the <coughs> DCQC will increase the, the rate a little bit uh, to try to <coughs> probe the uh, upper limit of the bandwidth. So if no uh, CMP, no congestion notification received, the sender will stay in active probing stage. So that's the DCQC. Uh, it's pretty complex. <coughs> it defines how uh, switch uh, detect congestion. It defines how sender react uh, to the to congestion. And beyond that, uh, DCQCN <coughs> try to avoid a PFC because PFC just uh, stopped uh, the uh, the traffic, <coughs> and the PCN uh, PFC might might involve deadlock, <coughs> might incur deadlock. So that's uh, uh, the current uh, algorithm used by uh, uh, Rocky V2, DCQCN, e uh, <coughs> ECN, and uh, PFC. Those are pretty com complex uh, uh, algorithm. And how we uh, uh, <coughs> improve Rocky V2? Basically, we run our uh, dynamic flow control algorithm on top of Risk Five. So. <coughs> Uh, more sp specifically, we implement implement the dynamic flow control uh, using software, and then we run the dynamic uh, flow control software on Risk Five. First, we implement the uh, dialog detection I mentioned above, and then we implement the adaptive flow control. <coughs> Again, we use a probabilistic model, Bayesian model, uh, for the adaptive parameter tune. This Bayesian model. Will update the uh, update the distribution for the DCQ parameter alpha because alpha is a key parameter to define the rate drop, and later <coughs> uh, uh, the rate drop the uh, the amount of rate drop will affect uh, will affect how fast the sender will recover the uh, send rate, and uh, <coughs> we define different uh, distribution uh, of alpha. For, for different stage, like a uh, sender receive uh, the concession notification, the sender in fast recovery stage, stage sender in active probing stage. Uh, each different stage has different distribution for for the parameter alpha. <coughs> and we set the alpha in each stage as the posterior, uh, as the expectation, uh, basically the mean value of, 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 the, of the distribution. <coughs> For, for alpha in each stage. Also, we need to support a, a floating point. Uh, this is a uh, ongoing work uh, because the uh, probabilistic numbers are pretty small. Usually, they are between zero and one, and the integer is not suitable for that. <coughs> uh, beyond that, uh, we need to uh, do a lot of logarithm calculation because the probability the models are so small, pretty close to zero. And uh, <coughs> to avoid uh, underflow, uh, we we use a uh, logarithm uh, of uh, probabilistic numbers. <coughs> and uh, uh, because we use a logarithm, uh, we can transform the normalization operation uh, <coughs> to summation and uh, subtract. What's normalization? Uh, because we are calculating probability uh, numbers, and the probability are real number between zero and one. So we have to normalize our probability number between zero and one. So that's normalization. So normalization involves a lot of <coughs> summation and the quotation. And with log logarithm, we can change the quotation into a, a subtraction. <coughs> so in our computation, it involves a lot of log logarithm uh, calculation, and uh, <coughs> we are uh, we are doing a logarithm acceleration. Uh, on top of uh, uh, using risk five, that's uh, ongoing work. Uh, about future work, uh, we like to uh, support uh, TCP also. So basically, we can support a mixed TCP and uh, Rocky V two traffic. Uh, 
But the, the, the key point, the thing, the issue is how to balance uh, their flow. Because TCP and uh, Rocky V2, they, <coughs> they each have a different flow control algorithm. So how to balance that? So as to in, uh, ensure uh, high performance and uh, uh, quality of service, QS. So that's uh, our future work. And that's it. Uh, that's my talk. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, bye.